Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and I'm in a brand new 1.2 test world to demonstrate a new mod. Um, it's one that I've covered before, but uh, it's recently been updated and it's a completely new rewrite of this mod. It's time to cover Thalmcraft 2. Now if you guys have not been following the development of Thalmcraft 2 or checked out some of the videos that uh, Azanor, the creator, has made and uh, he's made a couple of little teaser videos, then you guys are really in for a shock. Uh, he has done an amazing job with this mod and I'm lucky enough to have gotten a beta copy so I can start doing a little testing and help him out finding some bugs and uh, also to do this video spotlight to get you guys excited about the mod. Now it's not released just yet but it will be out pretty soon, uh, hopefully within a week or two of this video airing and uh, it's just awesome. Um, there's a couple things that aren't in the game just yet so I won't be able to show you but I will tell you about them. Uh, but without further ado let's get started checking out some of the awesome and cool new things in Thalmcraft 2. Alright so the basics of Thalmcraft. Um, initially one of the most important things to know is that um, there's a rating of Thalmic energy in each chunk. And what that means is there's an aura rating and a taint rating. Aura you can think of as kind of positive energy, positive magic energy. And it's just all around, you can't see it right now, um, but you can get a reading on it with an item I'll show you guys in a bit. And the aura rating of an area is pretty much how much viz or uh, vis, I believe it's pronounced, is available in the world. Um, so each chunk has its own aura rating. And uh, if we go looking around the world here, and why don't I go find one real quick, here's one. Uh, you can find these Vs crystals all over the world. There's six different kinds. Um, this, I want to say, is an aqueous one. Let's see. Hey, I was right. Aqueous crystals. And if we look in uh, TMI here, NEI, we can see Vs crystals, vaporous, which is air, aqueous, which is water, earthen, which is earth, dirt, and uh, fiery, and then tainted. All right, so all around the world you can find these different crystals. Let's go find some more while we're here. I happen to know of a few that I found earlier. So here's a Vs crystal, and we can knock this guy off and harvest him. And uh, these crystals will also, if you don't break them, replenish the Vs in an area. So uh, you can think of uh, the Vs in the area as a finite resource that um, if you do collect it using some of the machines, will eventually uh, run out. But um, Vs from other chunks nearby will slowly seep into the chunk here that you're in. So um, leaving the crystals unharvested will help to replenish the Vs in an area, or you can harvest them for use. So it's kind of a balancing act of what you want to do. Now taint is considered a form of magical pollution. Um, there's, uh, it's basically negative energy and it's bad. And uh, there's some items and machines that use it, but for the most part, it's unusable by items and machines. And if taint gets too crazy in an area, start, uh, it starts causing some bad things to happen. So um, unfortunately in this current beta version, the uh, taint effects on the landscape are currently disabled. So I won't be able to show you those just yet. But uh, if you check out one of uh, Azanor's videos, I think he shows it um, and it's really cool looking. So uh, that's the taint and the aura. And uh, there's also a positive and negative charge that a chunk can have. Uh, when it's positively charged, it slowly gains Vs. And uh, if it's negative charged, it'll slowly gain taint. Um, now a chunk can have both a positive and negative charge at the same time, but it usually balances itself out quickly because those two things will uh, compensate and affect each other. So that's the basics of where the energy in Thalmcraft comes from. It's just in the chunk around you. Now let's look at some of the different blocks and items that you can craft in Thalmcraft. One of the first items available in Thalmcraft that's probably going to be one of the first things you create is called a crucible. As you can see, there's different kinds of crucibles out there, um, but they're not all initially available to you at the beginning of the game. And I'll get down to what that means in a little bit. But the crucible, crafted with a furnace, a cauldron, which is one of those vanilla items, I believe it's not really used anymore, and a uh, beast crystal, or any kind of crystal for that matter, will give you a crucible. And when you place a crucible on the ground in the world, it's pretty much empty from the start, but it's got those little neat green particle effects under it, which I think are pretty cool. And dropping items into your crucible will pretty much uh, dissolve the items and uh, release the inherent beast that's inside those items. Now, unlike the original version of Thalmcraft, this is not the most efficient way to collect um, Vs. 
And the more rare or more, uh, you know, uncommon an item is that you put into it, the more Vs you will collect um, from that item. So throwing diamonds in there is a lot more Vs that you'll get from uh, than you, if you would throw cobblestone in. So it's pretty much a, a value of how much energy is inside that item. Now, like I said, it's not a very efficient way of getting Vs because you're only getting about 50% of the value of the Vs uh, out of the item. The other 50% comes out as taint. So I'm making up numbers here, but let's just say that a diamond was worth 100 of this magical energy. 50% of it would be the positive energy, and 50% would come out as negative tainted energy. And most machines can't use taint, so we're going to have to find some ways of cleaning up this uh, energy pool, uh, the Vs here, and uh, I'll get into that again in just a few minutes. But that's one of the ways to get Vs. Now the higher tier crucibles, which I told you you can't craft just yet, uh, have better ratios, and uh, there's other efficiency improving things. For example, um, there's uh, this guy here, the Crucible of Eyes. He'll send out a redstone signal once it gets close to full. And the Thaumium Crucible here can't overflow no matter how many items are in there. The items will just stay inside until uh, it becomes available for more stuff to come out. Now in order to transmit and use this vis, first off we need to get some conduits. And these guys right here are crafted with some glass planes, or glass panes, some wood, and some redstone. And these are basically transport modules for your Vs. And uh, by connecting these items here, the Vs starts traveling through the modules. And in order to store this stuff, we're going to need what's called a Vs storage tank. Simply place that on the end of one of your things, out of these conduits, and all the Vs will get drained out of your crucible and head straight down into that storage tank. Pretty cool. And if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and craft yourself a Vs valve, shown here. And the uh, Vs storage tank is crafted with enchanted wood, by the way. I'll show you how to make that in a minute. Uh, the Vs valve is basically a valve lever, which prevents Vs from flowing through. So if we were to drop a few more diamonds in here. Note that Vs is not flowing through the pipe right now. If you right click on the valve, it'll open up and allow the Vs to go through into the tank, but close it again and the Vs will no longer fill the tank. This will also accept a redstone signal to turn on and off. Pretty cool. Now another way to collect Vs, a more, I'd say, efficient way, is using condensers. And the condenser, as you can see here, is crafted like so. Again, you're going to need a Vs crystal and some of this enchanted wood, which I haven't shown you how to make yet. Simply place your condenser on the ground and open up the interface. Now, there's some things here that you should know about. First off, this is showing you the current phase of the moon. And if I adjust the day, you can see it goes from no moon to full moon. And the uh, more moon available here is more efficiently how well the Vs condenser will run. And what you have to do is place any Vs crystal in the slot here, and it will start creating Vs and drain the energy out of that crystal. So let's place that in. You can see the crystal shows up on top of the condenser and it starts creating Vs. Now if I run my Vs conduit over here like so, there you go, it's going to start filling up. And what I might actually want to do, just to demonstrate the difference, I'm going to go ahead and hook up a, another tank right here and a Vs conduit like so. Now it's going to take a moment or two for this condenser to start working. Um, it has a little bit of a charge up time, so let's give that some a some, uh, few minutes or so and I'll come back to show you guys what that looks like. Also note that you can place any colored crystal in here and it'll do the same thing. So I just placed an air crystal in the left slot on this other one and it's doing the same thing. Now we're producing Vs out of this guy. And note that the color of the Vs is a little bit brighter than this one. So condensers actually produce pure, untainted Vs. It drains it directly out of the crystal, so it uses the Vs crystal here, um, but it's pure. There's no taint whatsoever in the Vs. Notice that this is a darker purple. It's tainted, where this is a nice, bright, and cheerful purple, and not so tainted. There's 0% taint in this Vs. 
Next up, we've got the Thaumic Infuser, crafted like shown. So this is another lower tier item, but it's pretty much the uh, heart of Thaumcraft. This is where all your stuff is going to start coming from. So let's go ahead and place one on the ground, like so. And I don't have a texture pack installed. This is how awesome this block looks in vanilla. Very nice designs, and uh, everything is very pretty in Thaumcraft. So the Thaumic Infuser, like the original Thaumcraft, combines items, but uh, no longer um, does it combine just two items. You can combine up to six items by placing them in one of the six slots here, and uh, the resultant item will land in the middle. So remember that uh, a couple of the items I've shown you so far, uh, specifically the tank, required some enchanted wood. Now in order to get enchanted wood, all we need to do is get some wood right here and some Vs crystals and place them inside this machine together. So one Vs crystal and one piece of wood. And you can hear the machine turning on, but it's not actually running just yet. We need to conduct our Vs conduits. There we go. And the fuser has a progress bar and creates enchanted wood. So place another piece of wood and another Vs crystal here, and you can see the progress bar filling up, and this awesome little particle effect going on on top of the machine. Very cool. This is how we get enchanted wood. And note, the color of the Vs here is getting darker. That's because uh, this machine cannot run on taint. Let's go ahead and open up this valve. Um, the taint does not run most machines, so we're using the pure Vs out of the system, but our system is getting clogged up with taint, which is not cool. So we need a way to get rid of that. Now in order to get rid of this stuff, we're going to have to uh, create a new type of item that I haven't shown you just yet. Simply combine redstone and glowstone here, and you get some nitor. And if you combine redstone with coal, you get alimentium. Now these two items are uh, used for a couple different things. Um, in particular, I need to create what's called a filter. And this Vs filter made with enchanted wood, iron, Vs conduits, and some alimentium is what's going to clean the taint out of our system. So if we were to sit here for a few minutes and just put a bunch of wood and Vs crystals inside this infuser and let it run for a few minutes, I'm going to get myself some more Vs crystals while I'm waiting. Notice how much darker the taint gets. So pretty much this Vs is almost completely taint at this point. Um, let's give it a few minutes and see what it looks like when we're completely out of Vs. So I've created a good amount of enchanted wood here. The stuff's pretty dark. I don't know if we're completely out yet, but why don't I show you guys a good way to find out. Um, all we're going to need is a compass. I'm going to get two of them actually. And some gold bars. And if we combine that in a system here with a Vs crystal, so let's get our Vs crystal, our compass, and a gold bar. And this one takes a moment or two to create. Oh, looks like we ran out of Vs in our system. So uh, let's open up this valve and let some more of this uh, natural and good Vs come out of the crucible. And that'll let this guy keep running. But keep in mind, we have a good amount of taint still in here. We're going to get what's called a Vs detector. And simply by placing that on your hotbar or anywhere in your inventory, I believe it'll work from, you can see on the bottom right hand side of the screen, it detects and tells you how much Vs is in an area. So this chunk, remember I said, has some Vs in it. And that is where um, I'm reading it from. So the bar there on the bottom right tells you uh, the level of Vs in the area. And because that little circle underneath is glowing, it means that this is a positively charged chunk and it's producing Vs over time. And we can also right click on a block and it'll tell you how much Vs, natural, pure, good stuff, is inside. So this tank here has 136 Vs, this one has 115. And this one's only got 21, so that means there's a significant amount of taint in there. You can also use it on your conduits to detect how much Vs are in your conduits. Right now, there's none because this is all taint. Not good. And this thing is empty as well. So that is the awesome Vs detector. Now, you can do a similar deal if you get a tainted crystal and simply place your compass, gold ingot, 
and Tainted Crystal. And it's again going to start using up some beasts. So you can see we're draining beasts out of here awfully quickly. I hope I have enough. Almost. Looks like I'm running out. So let's drop another diamond in here. And check it out now. You can see that uh, there's beasts going into our tank. And a small amount of beasts. Looks like almost none going through the lines there. So now we've got a taint detector. And this guy detects taint in an area. So you can see the taint level is pretty low. Um, check it out in the bottom right hand corner of my screen there. It's the darker area. And uh, because that um, little circle underneath is not glowing, it means that this area is not negatively charged. So the chunk that I'm currently working in has a positive charge and a good amount of beasts in the area. And uh, a small amount of taint is available in the air. And uh, if you combine these two items together, or, let's go over this real quick, if I right click on an item, you can detect using this thing, the taint detector, uh, how much taint is currently sitting inside of a conduit or inside of a tank. So lots of taint in there, not good stuff. Finally, the top tier of this item, if you combine the taint and beast detectors, and you also put in an aqueous, earthen, fire, and vaporous crystal, those are the four different uh, elemental crystals and uh, we're gonna need to get a little bit more beasts available in here and yeah I've got some over there I'll get to that stuff in a minute combine these guys and you get the thermometer and this guy can read both the beasts and taint level and the capacity of an object so you can see that uh, you know this guy, for example, has a small amount of beasts and a large amount of taint. Currently 62% of this volume is taint, and it's at 65% capacity. This guy has pure beasts and zero taint. Remember I said these objects here would not create any taint. And you can see how cool it is. Uh, the beast condenser is draining the energy out of that crystal, and the crystals are slowly getting darker and less powerful looking. And eventually they'll be used up entirely. So that's your thalmic detector, uh, thermometer. The uh, other thing it does is it shows you on the bottom right hand corner there, there's an arrow. It shows the uh, change in an area over time. So as I'm walking around here, you can see small amounts of uh, the beasts going up and down. And uh, there's small amounts of changes here. Like I said, uh, beasts from nearby chunks can uh, bleed into this one and vice versa. So a pretty neat little device. So on to how we clean taint out of a system. Otherwise, we'd have all this taint just sitting in here, and uh, it would eventually require more storage, and the taint, like I said, isn't terribly useful. So let's get ourselves a filter. Uh, this guy, crafted with the elementium and the enchanted wood, is the way we get rid of uh, the taint. Now all we really got to do is place down a filter and run a conduit into it. And one way to do this is uh, to run the filter directly in the line between your crucible and your tank. Or something that I came up with is uh, simply to run it like so. And this will allow the tank to run into the filter and the filter to then output directly back into the tank. And what this is actually doing is dumping the uh, taint into the surrounding area. So you can see the taint bar on the bottom right corner. The taint is going up. So uh, this is one of the side effects of taint. And it looks like in the background there, one of my vis crystals just died out. So uh, it became a tainted crystal. Ooh, good to know. And uh, this thing looks like it's almost done. So the taint is going out into the air, and it's draining it all out of this system. So if we take a look here, you can see that we still have a little bit of vis in here, but the taint level is going down. So this is a way to filter out the taint and dump it into the atmosphere. But like I said, um, it's not available in this version yet, but if you dump too much taint out in the atmosphere, weird and bad things start happening. Uh, but eventually, as you can see, it starts really cleaning out the vis and... Uh, the taint is all gone. So that's a nice way to clean up and get rid of taint. So maybe now is a good time to connect these two tank systems and uh, also run some over to here. Yeah, that sounds cool. Now we've got access to all this beast as well in our thalmic infuser. 
So let's go ahead and infuse a couple other cool things to show you what else is available in Thalmcraft. There's a lot more to cover. Uh, first off, you can combine this Alimentium and Nitor, and if you guys remember this from the first version of Thalmcraft, you get what's called an Arcane Singularity, which is pretty cool. Simply throw it somewhere. Let's get a good vantage point, shall we? And it creates a very powerful pulling effect. Very cool. Neat little toy. Now another item that you can craft here is called an arcane boar. Why don't I go ahead and place this guy on the ground and open up the interface. Uh, you can see there's a slot for some of these arcane singularities. And what this is is basically an automated mining machine that requires a focus to go into the top slot. And it uses the arcane singularities that I just showed you in a more confined manner to get items for you. So I think all we have to do is place uh, one of these focus items, the foci, into the top slot. You can see there's a couple different ones that are crafted using iron and a vis crystal. And uh, there's different options available for them. Uh, there's uh, a medium focus, medium range, improved speed. The basic one just has a pretty narrow focus um, and medium range. Uh, but there's more range and different focuses available here. So I think this guy, the Earth one, for example, would have a much wider range. Um, and uh, this one would, would have a much longer range. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and try the basic one, the arcane focus, and place the arcane singularity in there and see what happens. Um, now, looks like this thing is sticking out this way, so I think I must have this guy oriented the wrong way. Let's see. Possibly. Possibly. So let's try something out real quick. The Arcane Tinkering Tools, which is made with a Thaumian ingot, which I believe is iron and a vis crystal inside one of those infusers, some redstone and some enchanted wood, is basically your equivalent of the wrench from Buildcraft or Industrial Craft. It's used to reorient machines, um, and I'm not entirely sure how. I haven't totally figured this out yet. So let's orient this guy downwards, maybe? And give this another try. So I'm going to go ahead and place this chest right here and place these guys and the arcane boar. Cool. All right, I think I've got this thing figured out. Um, I think you have to apply a redstone signal to get this thing started. Hey, there it goes. Sweet. It's clearing the area out and pumping all the stuff up top. And uh, I think I can collect that stuff myself. Or if I wanted to, I could run some build craft pipes over here. Or go ahead and just uh, connect the uh, chest right on the top here. So if I were to get myself a chest. There we go. All the items automatically land in the chest. So like I said, either connect build craft pipes or directly to a chest. And it works great. Pretty nice little item. Um, now, of course, it is using up some of these arcane singularities here, and you can see a progress bar showing you both the singularities getting used up and the durability of the arcane focus, so you need to replace those items eventually. Um, but look at that. That is cool. It's sucking all those items up, and it's uh, actually moving pretty darn fast through this area. And that is a really cool little visual effect that's going on as the items get sucked up. A very powerful, but semi-expensive device. Pretty awesome, though. So you can see that it just finished up running, and uh, we're currently at about Y25, so because we used a lower version of that arcane bore, we're not getting quite too far down. Um, we need a longer distance if we want to get all the way down to bedrock, or a wider distance if we want to get more than a 3x3 hole. Sweet. And oh, look what I see in the distance, a wisp. 
That's right, Thomcraft actually adds a couple cool little enemies and creatures into the game. This is one of them, it's called a Wisp. Um, I don't want to kill it because it looks friendly and it hasn't attacked me yet, but it looks uh, pretty cool. These guys will spawn in any areas with high um, Thomic energy, and uh, they're pretty neat. There's also a couple other enemies out there that uh, I may or may not be able to show you uh, in this video, but if I do run across them, I'll show you what they look like. They are pretty cool. Now the next item I want to get to is called the Quantasium, or Quatesidum. Quate, yeah, I should have practiced pronouncing that before I started talking. Uh, the, the, the Q block, that starts with Q, uh, is basically your research tool. Now um, if you look through any eye here, you'll see there's quite a lot of items available once I find them. And uh, yeah, here's a lot of them, a lot of them. A lot of them and specifically we're looking at these things here called discoveries and uh, there's a bunch of items that are unavailable to craft initially in the game you must discover them through research so even if you know the recipe you can't craft them until you get done with the research and that's done with this little machine here called the quasidium or quasitum yeah I'm butchering that aren't I uh, in order to run this machine you're gonna need some items to research and you're gonna need uh, some paper so let's get checking out on this block and how he works. Okay, so research basically takes place in three stages. Um, you need paper up in your top slot, and that's basically considered a fuel source. And all you have to do is place a block in the top slot here, and that's what you're going to research. So you can notice that uh, there's only a 1% chance of success when you're using cobblestone. But if we throw iron in there, you've got up to a 2% chance and a pretty high failure rate. Um, but more expensive items, like a block of diamond, for example, has a 24% chance of success. So the uh, higher value of the items equates to the higher chance of research. Uh, but there's another way to bump this up. Simply surround the thing with some bookcases and you increase your chance of success. So if I throw a piece of cobblestone in there now, you can see I've got a 6% chance of success with a cobblestone. And a block of diamond is all the way as high as 29%. So uh, by throwing bookcases around there, you've got a better chance of success uh, in your research. Now, we can go ahead, of course, and research a piece of cobblestone, but there's only a 6% chance that we'd be successful and a 75% chance that we'll lose the item. So it looks like we didn't lose the item, so it's going to automatically research it again. Um, and uh, it's going to keep trying until that loss chance happens or until the success happens. Uh, so let's give that guy a few minutes here, and we'll see what happens. Looks like I'm getting really lucky with my random dice rolls. Up oh, there we go. The lost chance occurred, and the item was lost. We don't lose paper until we actually discover something. Um, now, another thing we could do is um, add boosting items down here. These are like bonus little slots. And by adding some items down here, you can see it's bumping up our chance of success. So, uh, you know, 6% without and 8% uh, with. Now, it's not as powerful as the item here, so if we put a block of diamond, we go up to 29, and another block down here brings us up to 53, and another block here up to 77. So, uh, you know, it gets pretty high if you really want to go crazy with it, but blocks of diamond are expensive, but since I'm demoing it, let's go for it. So we've got a 77% chance of success on this research. Hey, and we succeeded. Um, we only lost one of our items here, which is cool. And we got a fragment of lost knowledge. Now, there's actually several types of fragments out there. Um, there's the fragment of lost knowledge, which comes from normal and vanilla items, and a couple different mod items are available to research with that. And there's also the fragment of forbidden, tainted, and eldritch knowledge. Now, most vanilla items will produce a fragment of lost knowledge, but there's a very, very small chance that you could get one of the other fragments um, from a vanilla item. Uh, but your best chance is to uh, go ahead and find what are called artifacts out in the world. Now, artifacts are usually found in chests, in ruins, or as mob drops. There's four types of artifacts, the lost artifacts, which will also produce lost knowledge, and then uh, the forbidden, tainted, and eldritch artifacts. And by researching those in your quasium here, you'll get uh, the other types of knowledge. And uh, those artifacts can be found, like I said, in chests and dungeons, you'll find the lost and forbidden artifacts. Tainted artifacts, these guys here, uh, can only be found in tainted areas. And eldritch artifacts have something to do with the monoliths, which I haven't shown you yet, but are pretty cool. 
Uh, so that's phase one, is researching one of those items. Now if you research the fragment itself, this is the phase two of the research. So here we've got a 15% chance of success with our lost knowledge here and looks like we failed. So, oh well, there was a pretty high percent chance of loss. So let's get ourselves some more fragments of lost knowledge and boost up the chance of success by throwing some blocks of diamond in there. And you can see that we got a theory. Cool. Theory is the phase two product of what you would get once you research. So uh, you can see there's a difficulty level here on how hard it is to research it. And it also tells you the name of the item. This is the arcane focus, fire. Now remember, remember when we saw those focuses? Okay, so we could craft the arcane focus, the standard one, but the fire arcane focus is uncraftable to us. There's no way to create it right now until we research this theory. Once we do, then we'll be able to craft this arcane focus of fire. And that's an upgraded focus, as you can see. Of course, you could give it to yourself with any eye, but that's cheating. Uh, now the phase three level of research here, if we go ahead and put this guy in, you can see there's a 100% chance of loss, so we'll definitely lose this theory once we're done, but there's a pretty decent chance of success, 53%, um, and there's a 9% chance of failure. The failure bar here really only comes into play in phase three of research, and we could boost up our success chance here by giving it some items. So I just put a couple blocks of diamonds in there, and we got a 101% chance of success. Um, we have to research this focus because it's a moderate difficulty. I want to say five times. Uh, so simply put a piece of paper in here and you'll see the research bar going across. Now the first time we research it successfully, you can see it ate up my blocks of diamond and gave me one research point. Okay, we researched it again and uh, that time we had a failure. Oh, there we go, another success. And it sounds like, oh yeah, look, there's a wisp. You could hear the uh, little jingle in the background. I knew there was one nearby. Uh, so we'll put our paper back in. And uh, let's get ourselves some more blocks just to guarantee ourselves some success. So if you had a failure, you'd lose one level. And with a success, you gain one level. And after significant amounts of researching, you finally, finally get the end item here, the discovery. Hooray! Now we've got what we need. Uh, simply take your discovery and right click it on your hotbar and uh, you'll quickly get a note. You can now make arcane focus fire and it gives you the recipe here. We simply need an arcane focus and a fiery crystal in our thomic condenser. Um, it has a medium range and spread but consumes low value items to increase the efficiency of the bore. How cool is that? So again, if you didn't know that recipe, you could not simply place it in the infuser. So if I hadn't have taught myself this recipe, which is a fiery crystal and an arcane focus, okay, so let's get ourselves some of that. And I'll show you this, for example, I'm going to go ahead and assume that if you combine a vaporous crystal with an arcane focus, you would get something. But see, nothing's happening. I haven't discovered the recipe yet. But now that I have discovered the recipe with the fiery crystal, we should be in good shape. So that's the basics of research, and you should know that about half the items in the game are required uh, to research before you can craft them. So there's a lot to do with research. Uh, this is definitely a big part of Thalmcraft. Now the last piece that I haven't gotten to just yet is the seals. Now seals, as you can see right here, arcane seals, replaced the old symbol and rune system from Thalmcraft 1. And in order to craft them, all you need to do is get yourself some redstone and some gold ingots and infuse them together in your infuser. So let's take care of that guy right now. There you go, arcane seal. So, gold, redstone, ta-da, arcane seal. And these guys used to be symbols. So let's place one on the ground like so. Cool. You can also place them on walls. So if you uh, have a wall up here, you can place them like so. Pretty neat. Uh, now to infuse them with energy, sitting there by themselves, they're not going to do anything. Um, but you need to get some runic essence. And in order to do that, I'll show you right now. Okay, so in order to get these uh, nifty things, all we have to do is get ourselves some crystals. So I'm going to get some Vis crystals, uh, some air, and I have some fiery on here from a few minutes ago. So that should probably do for now. Yeah, looking good. And all you have to do is combine a gold nugget, some of the nitor that we got earlier, 
and one of the crystals in here to get yourself some runic essence. So a Vis crystal will get you magic. And uh, let's go ahead and put a whole stack of these guys in for now. The Vaporous crystal will get you air. Cool. And the Fiery crystal will get you fire. Awesome. Um, now you can also get Aqueous, Earth, and Tainted, but not all the combinations are available yet in the beta version that I have. But let's look at what we can do with them. Now a good way of detecting what these things do is to craft a crystal ball, as you can see here. Uh, the crystal ball will show you and tell you exactly what your items, uh, your, your combinations of essences do when you place them on the seal. Every seal can have three essences placed on it. So you can see there's three little dots here, and by right clicking on it with a crystal ball, it tells you this seal is null. There's nothing on it. Now all we gotta do is place something on there. So let's put fire on, for example. Okay, placing fire on and detecting with the crystal ball shows you that it has a short range cone of fire at nearby enemies with a minor area of effect. So let's get ourselves some spiders because we know they're not going to die in the world with the light out. So let's go ahead and put our spider right here. Note that this awesome area of effect ability starts shooting flames at the spider. Cool. But it has a pretty short range, not, well, not too short, I guess, but not terribly long range either. If we place another fire guy on there, you can see it has a medium range cone of fire with a moderate area of effect. Um, so let's get ourselves some more essences because I'm going to want to show you them in a minute. Okay. So let's give this guy a shot. Notice it's a much bigger flame, and if I put another guy on there after these things all die, notice it also has an area effect ability, but not quite a good range. Pretty close. Bump up another level, and you can see it has a medium range cone of fire with a large area of effect. Super cool. Now, like I said, you can combine different effects. So let's take a look at another one. I'm going to knock this off. Now, there's no way uh, without a special item that you have to research to get your essences back. So make sure when you place your essences on your seal that you know what you're doing. Um, let's check out another one. I'm going to get myself some more essence here. I'm going to get some air essences and uh, place them right down here on the ground. And you can see that this emits a weak blast of air that blows items and creatures away. Cool. So if I uh, do something like this... Neat. Put a second one on there, it emits a moderate blast of air that blows items and creatures even further away. And the final version, Strong Blast, that goes them even further away. So, look at that. No joke about that Strong Blast of Air, huh? Let's combine Air and Fire. Dun dun dun. This seal throws crippling bolts of lightning at creatures within range. Ooh, that sounds neat. Definitely cool. I like it. Awesome. Alright, let's check out another combination here. I'm going to place down um, some air and some dark. So if I put down air, which remember that would push things away, combine that with dark, and it kind of does the opposite. It sucks items and creatures towards itself. And if we had a chest on this thing, uh, which I'll have to find one real quick. Maybe? Maybe not. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but we could also infuse this guy with fire. Let's check that out. This will suck nearby items and creatures toward it, and anything contacting the seal will suffer damage. So let's get out our spiders again and check that out. 
so cool. And they all die. Wahahaha. Pretty neat system. And let's look at one more combination. As I said, there's a lot, and some of them aren't even ready in the game just yet, but there's a ton. I'm going to put a magic one on there, which is uh, made with regular Vs, and uh, check out what this does. This seal positively charges the local aura at a slow rate, boosting any thomic devices. But if I combine that with air, uh, this seal creates a portal through which you can travel. Awesome. And I'm going to place a, uh, another rune right here. So let's get ourselves some runes. And another magic plus air. Okay. All right, just cleaned up my inventory. Let's check out these guys. So the portals are really cool. All you gotta do is walk up to them. It'll automatically open up the portal that you can step through. And it shows you what's on the other side. So you can see me coming out the other side there. That's where that guy's gonna be. So awesome. Um, now you can also, if you want, uh, encode these guys with a specific type of essence. So if I were to uh, get my crystal ball back here, just cleaned up my inventory so I have to get a new one, and uh, check out what this rune does, um, and place a fire essence on it, there we go. Currently linked to the fire rune network, which means that uh, there are no fire runes out there in the world, so uh, this guy is not connecting to anything, and neither is this one. Uh, so it's a way of specifically determining which portals lead to where. Um, if I were to give this guy a fire rune, for example, or maybe place another one over here, and I don't know if it needs to be like, uh, you know, let's see. Uh, magic and air. And put down another rune. Alright, so let's place down another seal here, and put down magic, air, and fire. And let's see how that works. Ah, perfect. Worked like a charm. So cool. What's up, cow? So that is another example of the runes, and like I said, there's tons of them. I mean, like, a lot. Um, there's a whole ton, and I might even do a whole video on just runes and all the different things that they do. And the last few things I'll show you before wrapping up the video are some of the environmental effects caused by the thomic content in the air. First off, you can see those little wisps, wisps forming, but there's also this neat stuff uh, here. If I go ahead and harvest it, um, might not be a good idea with the wrong tool, but you'll see what it's about in a moment here. Uh, this is called great wood logs, and they're used uh, for a particular purpose that you guys will have to wait and find out about, because uh, I'm not entirely clear on what they're used for. And uh, let's see if there's any other cool things out here to find. Ah, there's one. Uh, we can find a uh, silverwood tree here. Uh, there's also some other neat little plants nearby that you guys can see. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that happens in the environment as a result of installing Thaumcraft, and these are just some of the examples uh, that you can find out there. Uh, silverwood trees are very rare, magical wood. It's used for a bunch of different things once you enchant it, and the trees themselves has a positive effect on the aura nearby. So if I get my thaumeter and uh, check that guy out, we can see that, uh, yep, there's definitely a high amount of thaum in this general area, and that's a good indication that the tree spawned there and all that cool stuff. Now let's go check out one more cool thing that happens when you have Thaumcraft installed and uh, affects the environment. This is something that I found a little bit ago. If I can track it down again, I'll be happy. Oh yeah, here it is. An obelisk. This guy is cool. I'm not going to go into what they are. It's pretty much a secret and you have to figure it out for yourself. Uh, but there's definitely something cool about these things and... Uh, you know, I think it has to do with those uh, Eldritch runes I mentioned earlier. Plus, there's, uh, I have no idea what else, but very cool looking effects on these guys. So guys, take my word for it when I tell you that I only barely scratched the surface on some of the cool things that Thaumcraft has available in Thaumcraft 2. I didn't even get to the taint area yet that I was talking about earlier, and uh, that's because it's not available yet in the beta copy that I have. And I also didn't really get a chance to show you some of the other items and runes that are available. Some of them, like I said, not completely set up and working yet, but uh, it's really cool. There's so much stuff that he has planned. And hey, look, a little slime. Nice. Perfect timing for him to show up. A couple of them, actually. Sweet. So, I think it's a pretty good wrapping up point for this spotlight.
So uh, this is Thaumcraft 2 by Azanor, an amazing mod. He really did a great job with it. All the particle effects and the sound effects and all the little details of this mod are just very well polished and well done. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. Um, like I said, there's really a lot, lot more to this. Um, tons of different items, uh, different effects, different uh, side effects from that Thaumic taint, all that cool stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed checking out this spotlight. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.